Okay, I'm going to go through the dependent demand calculations um, that are covered by our authors from the Exhibit 13.8 as well as um, this Exhibit 13.9. I'm going to want to do the calculations directly on the diagram from 13.8, but I'll refer back to uh, the uh, on-hand inventory found in uh, uh, the middle column of 13.9. So we know we need to produce 100 A units. So we know that's what we need to produce. Um, but what we have on hand is for our inventory on hand for items B, we have 33 items on hand. Item C, we have 12 of those on hand. Item D, we have 47. Item E, we have 10. Item F, we have 20. G, we have 15. H, we have 30. And I, we have 7. I'm going to come back to the other D and E items um, after bit here. So hold tight on those. So in order for us to calculate the dependent demand uh, that we have for item B, we look at the difference between uh, the number of items that we need to produce from the parent and subtract out what we have on hand. So we know we need to produce or create 67 item B's and if we carry that logic um, the rest of the way down this dependent uh, demand if we have 67 items of B that we need to create we've got 12 C items we know that we need then the difference is 55 so we need to create 55 C items in order to um, fulfill our order of 67B items. Similarly, with item D, we have 47 on hand. We need to get to 67, so we know we need to produce an additional 20D items. And if we need 20D items, and we've got 10E items on hand, we need to produce an additional 10 E items. So let's go down the other branch of our uh, of our diagram over here with F. We need to get uh, to 100 A items from our 20 F items means we need to produce 80 more F items. And in order to satisfy that demand, if we've got 15 G items in stock, we know we need to produce yes another 65 G items and when it comes to H if we have uh, 30 on hand we know we need to produce another 50 in order to satisfy the demand of 80 F items so <clears throat> um, going further down for I we've got 7 on hand but for every H that we make, we need two I components. So, in, in essence, we need to cover 100, um, not just 50. So, 100 minus the 7 that we have on hand means that we would need to uh, produce 93 additional I components in order to meet the demand uh, of 50 H components. Now, when we get to the D and E, we also had D and E over here. Uh, but in order to satisfy this demand of 67, we've already used up our 47 and our 10. So es essentially, we have zero demand over, or zero on hand for either of these. So we need to produce 50 of each of these items as well. So in total, our E items added together we need 60 of those and our D items 
we need 70 of those. So um, the answers we uh, were able to compute directly on our bill of material chart um, correspond with the, uh, the calculations here in the um, um, chart exhibit 13.9. And if we were going to do anything uh, in terms of analysis of something even more complex than this, perhaps we would want to put that into a spreadsheet uh, formula and model it using a spreadsheet. But uh, for something that's this visual, it's uh, probably just as easy, I find, in order to do the math directly on the chart itself.